Welcome to this Answers video training session. In this session, we are going to go over how to debug DVD hotspots in a vectorless analysis. This here is a design that has been analyzed for dynamic voltage drop using the vectorless flow in Redhawk. Let us look at the results of the analysis using Explorer. The following are the constraints that have been used while generating Explorer. I have said 100 millivolts as a DVD threshold for the analysis. I am identifying three hotspots in the entire design and I'm using the minimum over whole cycle as a parameter for calculating the hotspots. The size of each hotspot has been set to be 50 micrometer by 50 micrometer. Since I've already generated Explorer, let's just look at the results. So we see that the worst drop in the design is 339 millivolts. Clicking on the DVD check, we get more details about this analysis. So we see 99% of the instances that are switching in the design are failing the 100 millivolt threshold. The three hotspots in the design are also listed here along with their worst voltage drop values. They're also highlighted in the GUI to the right. Clicking on any of these hotspots on the GUI highlights it on the Redop GUI as well. Below we have a DVD histogram. The histogram depicts the worst drop seen in each hotspot versus the number of hotspots that are seeing this drop. We see most of the hotspots are showing drops which are closely uh, located to one another. However, there is one hotspot which is showing a drop much higher than all the other hotspots. This would mean that the weakness in this hotspot is localized to this region, whereas the weakness in all these hotspots could be either localized to this region or they could be generalized to the entire design. The hotspot 1 and hotspot 2 actually cover only one instance within the hotspot, so this would be fairly easy to debug. However, hotspot 3 has a lot more instances in it, which would be a lot more complicated to debug. So let's look at hotspot 3 and understand the reason for the drop in this region. So here we see a list of weakness checks for the hotspot. The power distribution quality, which is the power density within this specific hotspot, is listed to be having a ratio of 5.23, which means that the amount of power density within this hotspot is roughly five times the average power density among all the other hotspots. This is also the seventh most power dense hotspot among all the hotspots in the design. So this is quite high. The clock buffer clustering check also shows there's more than two times the amount of clock buffer clustering in this hotspot compared to all the other hotspots in the design. And this is the sixth most clustered hotspot among all the hotspots that have any clock buffers in them. The PG resistance distribution is also a little high. We see it's the 54th most um, high resistance hotspot among all the other hotspots in the design. The peak current seems to be quite high in this hotspot. There's five times the amount of peak current in this hotspot in comparison to the average peak current seen through each hotspot. And then this is the second highest peak current in any hotspot among all the hotspots in the design. So based on this, we can identify four factors which are major contributors to the drop in this region. They, they are the power density in this region is quite high. The clock buffer clustering in this region is quite high. The resistance to the instances is relatively high and the peak current of the instances in this region is also quite high. So the power density, clock buffer clustering and the peak current, they all contribute to high current that is flowing through the nets into this region. And the high resistance combined with high, power, high current would lead to a high drop throughout the PG, to PG nets that are supplying to this region. Looking at the data integrity, we see there is good data integrity coverage for all the instances in this region. The histogram shows us the voltage values uh, for each and every instance along with the number of instances that are showing the specific drop. So we don't see a big difference between the lowest voltage drop which is 262 millivolts to the highest voltage drop which is 270 millivolts. 
This means that the factors that are causing the drop in this uh, hotspot are generalized to the entire hotspot and it's not localized to a few instances. If it were localized to a few instances, those instances would be showing a much higher drop compared to the rest of the instances in the design. So based on this and based on the design weakness check, it would show that these four factors, which is the high power density, high clock buffer clustering, high peak current, and the relatively high resistance are all together contributing to the drop among all the instances in this region. Let us look at the hot instance to understand the impact of each of these factors. So here we see the voltage waveforms on the VDD and VSS pin of this instance. The worst drop on the VDD pin is shown as 147 millivolts and the worst drop on the VSS is shown as 122 millivolts. So the VSS bounce is a little lower than the VDD drop. So we are seeing more drop on the VDD pin in comparison to the VSS. Looking at the waveforms as well, we see that there are lows and peaks in the voltage waveform for the VSS pin. For the VDD pin, however, there is not as much variation throughout the waveform. So this means that the average drop through the entire simulation is quite high. Looking at the properties of the cell, we see that there is a high peak current to the VDD and VSS pins of roughly 1.3 milliamps. The instance is switching during the simulation and the average power is also relatively high for this instance. Data integrity shows that there is good data coverage for this instance. Looking at the design weakness, we see the peak current for this instance is ranked 8th among all the other instances in this hotspot. So this means that this instance has a quite a high peak current. The power for this instance is also quite high, which is ranked 24th among all the other instances in the hotspot. The load is also slightly high. Path tracing helps us identify the electrically shortest path from the instance to the pads. So here the instance that is located here is going all the way to the pads that are located here for connection. We can show this map in Redox to get a better view. So the instance is located here and the electrically shortest path to the pads is all the way here. So the question is, why are these pads being ignored? If we looked at the design, we'd see that there are metal six segments that are flowing through this region, which are connecting to the pads here. However, the pads in this region are only connected to metal four. So this means that uh, electrically shortest path would be from the metal six in this region through the metal five, two instances that are connected here. Because of the high resistance of metal 4 that are connected to the pads here, these pads are not as effective in supplying current to the instances located in these regions. We can look at the segment wise breakdown for all the segments in the electrically shortest path that has been identified earlier. So here we see all the segments and the drop across their segments we see relatively high drops through a lot of these segments. And this metal 5 segment specifically is showing a high drop of 48 millivolts. The resistance for this metal 5 segment is not that high. So this means that a high current is flowing through this segment. By back calculating, it would be a current of roughly 15 milliamps that is flowing through the segment. Zooming into the segment in Redox and clicking on the net. We see a current of 15 milliamps that is flowing through that point that we just queried. To understand why such a high current is flowing through this segment, let us look at the design. So we see metal 6 which is located here and the instances that are located here. There, is, there are not as many metal 5 segments that connect the, ins the instances here to the metal 6 segments here. So the few metal 5 segments that exist end up having to carry a lot more current. 
improving the connectivity between the segments in this region to the segments in this region would help reduce the current flowing through each and every segment in this area. Similarly, a metal pore segment is showing a high drop as well. And this would be because there are not as many metal pore segments supplying the instances in this region to the current that is coming from uh, the metal 5 and metal 4 segments in this region. So improving the metal 4 connectivity would improve the drop across this region. So based on this we have identified the main cause for the hotspot uh, to be high power consumption, high clock buffer clustering, high PG resistance and high peak current. So by improving the robustness of the PG along with addressing the power density of this hotspot would help reduce the drop across the entire hotspot. This is how we can debug the drop in any region in Redoc. Please feel free to let us know if you have any questions regarding this. This brings us to the end of the session. Thank you.